Hi, everybody. Welcome to Bass Hit in New York City. I'm Dave Darlington, and today we want to talk about a quick way to spice up your drums using a couple of new plugins. One for pitch, called Torque, and one for transients, called Smack Attack. I have a song that was given to me by my friend Albert Barrero, who's a Spanish artist, and this is called Latin Waves. And this particular song starts with drums. So, of course, you want the drums to be very exciting in the mix, so you grab the listener right off the bat. So this is the raw drums with a little bit of balance. So it's a pretty good drum recording and it's got a lot of energy and, and it's well played and everything, but I think we could do it a little better by maybe tuning the drums a little bit and making them smack a little harder. First, let's solo the kick. Nice and isolated. He's playing, you know, some ghost notes and stuff. So this is torque, and the first and most important thing is to find the fundamental of the drum that you're trying to, to transpose. And that's what this focus area is all about. You can, you can sweep through the frequencies with the, um, the focus control, and if you hold the mouse down on this little speaker, it works like a bandpass filter, so you can really hear where the main meat of the drum is. So let's hear the kick. You can see that you can see that peak of that wave right there around 102, and you can also hear it when I solo it. So now we know we're focusing on the kick drum sound on that microphone, and now we have to rock the threshold so that we get all the ghost notes and we get the main notes and we transpose those, but we don't transpose a lot of stuff that might be leaking from other microphones or uh, extra artifacts if we make it too strong. So there's a color there's a color um, LED output here to show you when you start to reach the threshold, it turns green. As you go lower, it turns yellow, which is the optimal, that's the optimal place to be. And if you go too far, it turns red. It's, which means you're going to start creating artifacts from the extra sounds. So you want to be kind of right, right where the green meets the yellow. And now we're going to transpose the kick and see if we can get some more meat into it. I, I can hear that right away. It's almost like a, a little bit of a sub uh, feeling, as if we had another mic with a little more bottom tone in, in a little bit outside of the drum to get that air. So that's uh, that's as if he tuned it, maybe tuned it, the skin down as well. So you, the, we're actually changing the fundamental of the drum note. Now that we've got a nice uh, tone, let's see if we can work on the envelope and add some attack and release. This is smack attack. It's very simple to understand. The, blue, the light blue one is the attack. You can decrease the attack or, or increase the attack. And the uh, yellow one is the sustain. You can make the drum shorter or longer. The main thing you want to do is rock the sensitivity, which is kind of like the threshold of, of where the plug-in reacts so that you, you can get the ghost notes, but you don't get any extraneous sound. So as, as you play the track, you'll see uh, an indication of the transients go by, and then I'll just move this sensitivity higher or lower until I, I'm getting the optimum results. And the red line is showing us the changes that we're making. So you can see we're increasing the attack and we're increasing that decay. See that decay right there? There's three shapes. Um, soft, medium, and strong. I just always experiment with it until I find the one that best suits the drum. And so in preparing the session, this is where I ended up with the longer decay on the, on the sustain part and a kind of a moderate attack. And you also have a parallel control, dry and wet, so you can keep some of the original sound and put in as much of the um, smack attack as you want. And there's a, an output uh, limiter, so you can make sure you're not overdriving everything at the end. You can put it on a straight limit or a slightly clip. So here's the, here's the kick before we did anything. Not bad, but kind of polite. And now, if we put these two on, without any compression or EQ or anything like that, we're just changing the tone, the fundamental tone, and the transient, the ADSR, if you will like a synth of how this drum is reacting. So it's, it's much more aggressive right away. It's, 
it's that feeling you get when the, when you go to a concert and that guy hits the kick drum and it's coming through the PA system and hitting you right in the chest. So we've got eight bars of drums at the at the beginning of this song. We really need to get people excited. So the snare, I thought, was a pretty nice tone already. I didn't really think I needed to use torque on that, but I thought I could use a little um, attack. Here's the snare as it was recorded. Nice close mic, and you hear the strainers on the bottom, but if I had a little bit more of the stick hitting the head and a little bit more of those strainers holding on, it might sound nicer. Here's the strainers. So that's really helpful on a snare, and sometimes on a big rock thing, you really want those, those strainers to ring, so you can exaggerate them in that case. But in this case, I would just add a little bit of length. Sounding great already. Let's hear that intro now. You can see already it's, it's, it's much more exciting with just a little bit of tone uh, control change in the drums to make the record jump out of the speakers, especially in today's world where the, where the playback systems are portable, uh, Bluetooth boxes and, or Bluetooth headphones. You know, you're not getting as much fidelity. We need to bring all that fidelity into play as best we can so that the consumer gets the excitement that the musicians are trying to create. There's only a couple of tom-tom fills. Let me solo right here where there's a good pair. Nice and clear, kind of polite. <laughs> so what if we add some torque and let's, uh, let's focus on that high tom first. You can see right here that you can see the wave pop up at 268. So I've got it zeroed in in the focus point and let's, let's crank it down like three. You can actually make the rack tom lower than the floor tom with torque. Watch this. So here's the fill. That's really, really accurate on toms, especially if you find the focus point. So I'm going to go like three. Let's do the same thing on the floor tom. Floor tom is focusing around 145. Okay. That sounds better, right? There's more resonance. They sound a little more in tune, a little more musical. Now we'll just add, uh, I was fooling around here with the, with the sustain going a little crazy. Let's add a little bit of attack and some good sustain. And you can see by the curve, the, the orange line is what the, is the result of the plug-in. You can see by that line how much the sustain is being held up over time. You can hear that in the tom sound that it's really hanging out for a long time. Let's hear that in context. So suddenly you have these toms that are now hitting you in the chest. Like when you go to a concert and you hear those drums really pounding out of the PA, that's, that's what we're looking for in our mix too. You want them to show some excitement. You just don't want them to go kind of flabbing through the tom-tom fill. So you can see very quickly with just a couple of, a couple of tweaks and, and mostly by ear, I'm just zeroing in on the fundamental of the drum uh, transposing it a little bit to make it a little a little fatter and you could do the opposite if you wanted to smack like a snare if you wanted to turn a regular fat snare into a piccolo snare you would go up but just a couple of tweaks and dial it in by ear it, do it doesn't really um, it's not rocket science it's just really easy to get to some really fat crystal clear drum sounds that adds a lot of excitement to your mix very easily so thanks Albert Barrero for Latin Waves and I hope I gave you some drums on steroids. <laughs>